way of life. Uh, but, but also, it's, it's, it's also about you know, taking the long view. And so with the Internet of Things, how do we begin to think about the long view? I mean, we're, all, we're talking about you know, the, the issues of the day, um, you know, whether it's legislation on, on smart cars, um, HHS last week <coughs> issued I mean, 500 pages of impenetrable regulation about electronic health records and mobile devices. Uh, we've got DOD and DFARS that are beginning to think about classified networks and, and supply chains related to the Internet of Things and all sorts of things. NHTSA, I mean, we seem to be, um, you know, our, our agencies and departments seem to be colliding in, in, in a regulatory sense. And so, you know, do we need, and I know, Senator, you've done a lot of work on this, do we need a coordinated national strategy? Because, you know, the rest of the world seems to have one. And it, it feels to me like we're just sort of bouncing back and forth from one issue to, to the next. And if we need a strategy, then how do we how do we get there? Well, I, I think you're right. We need to take the long view. And let me just say a, a couple of things about, about the positive movement. Uh, the chairman of the committee, John Thune, um, is taking the long view. And he is in the great tradition of Commerce Committee chairs who works on, you know, he's a strong Republican, but he's just a practical person. He is just a, he's a bipartisan guy. He, he works in the art of the possible. There are times where, you know, I'm not able to support his, his, uh, his view on something, but he is always looking for common ground. And to that end, uh, Senators Booker and uh, Ayotte and Fisher and I, on a bipartisan basis, have a little IOT working group. So those, that's some of the good news. Um, the, the challenge right now, even within the working group, is this sense that um, it is this false choice between the sort of heavy hand of a, a, a premature overregulation and doing nothing and allowing the private sector to flourish, right? And that's the false choice that you know Democrats want to come in and fix something on behalf of consumers that, like like I said, they read about in the Atlantic or whatever, or that they experienced themselves, or someone walked up to them and said, you know, I got uh, you know. Uh, hosed by this company, there ought to be a law. So Democrats want to come in and fix it and make a law. And Republicans right now, their instinct is to say, this thing's flourishing. Uh, we got to push back against Democrats who want to ruin it. You know, And the, the sweet spot is, well, the, I, let me just say, it, it's not even the sweet spot. The vast gap between people who want to over-regulate and burrow into one particular challenge that already occurred and the people who want to do nothing um, is where we need to work, right? And um, uh, I, I'm not going to be overly sanguine about where we are right now, but I think there is a lot of room for bipartisan cooperation in that space as long as we can get Democrats to admit that um, this is going to be a challenge, this is going to take a while, we shouldn't over-regulate right away, and then we can get Republicans to admit that this is not something we should do literally nothing about, that this is going to take a new uh, public policy framework to allow it to flourish. So that's the space that I think we're trying to create. I think we are, given the Congress Committee's history and given the current composition of the Congress, uh, it, we're on a three to five year time frame to, to make meaningful uh, policy changes, but that's okay because even, in my view, even if we had the perfect public policy, we probably ought to see a few more cards um, before we, before we um, create a statute. 